Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video, I'd like to introduce you to the new phase animator method that was introduced in iOS 17. It's a powerful way to create stateful animations in your app that can change over a sequence of phases that you define. In addition, I'll also introduce you to the new animation chaining that was also made available in iOS 17. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. I have a starter project for this video and I recommend that you download it from the link in the description and work along with me. That way, at the end, you'll have a reference project with working code that you can refer back to in the future when you want to implement these features. In the project, I have three views here where I'll be working on to demonstrate our implementations. I also have a view modifier that I use in my form sections to center the content within the form. And this start tab here is only should you wish to run this in the simulator or on your device. We'll be working entirely in Xcode and previewing in the canvas though. Before I start with phase animation though, I want to cover one kind of unrelated feature in iOS 17, and that's the ability to chain normal animations together by adding a new completion block onto an animation. Currently, in this first example, I have a system image that changes between checkmark.square and square depending on the value of the isDone state variable. And I have a tap gesture here that toggles that value. Well, we can make this more interesting by adding an animation block to this toggle, like this, where I'll use an ease in out with a duration of a quarter of a second. Now, this is okay, and if you've watched my videos on the new symbol effects, we could do better. However, I want to take a different approach here and introduce you to a new feature introduced in iOS 17. So let's start by adding another state property called scale it. And I'll initialize it as false as well. Next, I'm going to attach a modifier after the font modifier that will add a scale effect based on the value of scale it. So using the ternary operation, if it's true, the scale will be 1.25, otherwise it'll be 1. So when we toggle the is done property, let's also toggle scale it. Well, this is good, but it remains scaled up until we tap again. I want to scale it up, and then afterwards, I want to scale it back down with an animation. So what we can now do is add a new completion closure to the animation. And then I can use that same animation here as before, but I'm just going to toggle the scale it. Now, after tapping, it scales up and then back down again. Now we've just chained two independent animations together. There's nothing stopping us from chaining another one after this, and in some cases this might be the way to go if you want to perform some specific animations or operations. However, if you want to do just animation, there's a better way, and that is using the new phase animator method. You can define a set of phases that you want to cycle through for animations. And the phases can be any non-empty sequence of equitable objects types. And the simplest case is a sequence of two Boolean values, true and false. So let's see how this works with this thumbs up image here. I'll attach a phase animator method after the font modifier and provide the sequence, which is true, false. And you'll see you get two arguments that we can use in this closure. The first will represent the content that you're modifying, which is our image, and the second will be the phase sequence. So let's just call them that, content and phase. And then in our closure, we can start with our content and add modifiers based on our phase state, and that will either be true or false. So for example, we can apply a scale effect if the phase is true and set it to 0 0.5, else if it's false, 1.0. Now immediately you see the thumbnail start to scale. Later on I'll show you how you can set a trigger for this so that it doesn't start immediately. But we can add more modifiers to this as well, such as applying a rotation effect based on that phase. 
So for this rotation effect, I'll use the degrees, and then again, another ternary operator, where if it's true, I'll set the rotation effects degrees to zero, otherwise, counterclockwise to negative 180. Now, this is rather fast, as it's using the default spring animation. Well, I can change this by adding an animation closure to this as well. And again, that provides us with a phase. Well, now I'm going to use the same animation for both cases, so I'll use just underscore for phase as I don't need it. And then I'll just use an ease in out animation with a duration of 0 0.75 seconds. That's pretty nice. Well, you can apply a phase animator method to anything that can be animated, such as a text view like we have here. What I want to do is to cycle through a number of different foreground styles and borders rather than stay with this red color. So let's remove those two properties for now. And I'm going to apply a phase animator method this time that'll have three phases. So we can use a sequence, which is an array of integers, because they're equitable, like one, two, and three. And then the content and phase will be our arguments. And in the closure, then, we'll use that content that we'll apply our modifiers to. Now that we have more than two phases, the ternary operator is not as straightforward, but I'm going to use it here just to justify what I'm going to do in the next section. So first, for the foreground style, we'll check to see if phase is equal to 1. If so, we'll apply red. Else, we'll have to do another ternary operator if phase is equal to 2. And if it's true, we'll apply the blue color. Else, it'll be green for the remaining phase. Now, that's not particularly easy to read. But let's carry on and add a border. And I'm going to use the same phases and color. Well, why don't we also add a scale effect that only scales in the last phase? So in this case, we'll use a scale effect, again with the ternary operator that's comparing the phase being equal to 3. And if it is, that's the last phase, it'll be 1.2. Otherwise, it'll be 1. Now I see it cycling through from red to blue to green, where it scales, and then jumps back to red and continues. It doesn't reverse. Now, if we want to add a different animation for each phase, we can do that by adding that animation block, but using the phase argument that we get in the closure. So I'll switch on phase, and then in the case where it's 1 or 2, I'm just going to use a smooth animation with a duration of 0 0.5 seconds. For the default or third case, though, I'll use the same animation, but for a 1 second animation. Well, this is a pretty nice effect, but the code is ugly. We can do much better than this. Well, as I said, we're going to improve. What I propose to do here is to create an enum to handle my phases and properties associated with those phases, and I can make an enum case iterable, which means then that I can use the all cases for my phase animator sequence. So for this first example, then, let me create an enum called animation phase. And as I said, it'll be case iterable, and it's going to have three cases, beginning, middle, and an end. I'm creating this outside of my current struct. At each phase, I want to change the opacity and the scale, and these are both double values. So I can create a computed property in the enum based on that case. So first, for opacity, a double. We'll switch on self. And then in the case where it's the beginning, we'll set the opacity to 1.0. For middle, 0 0.5. And for end, 1.0. Now I can tighten this all up here. Well, let me copy this then and change from opacity to scale. And then I can set both the beginning and the end to be 1.0. So I'll remove that last end case now. 
And I'm going to change the middle though to 1.5. Well, now that I have that, I can apply a phase animator to my heart here and use the animation phases all cases as my sequence of phases to get the content and phase that I can use in the closure starting with that content. Now, since we have a trailing closure here, I can clean this up and make it more swifty by removing the last bracket here and removing the content label. Now it's easy to apply our opacity and scale effect based on these computed properties. The opacity will be the phase opacity. The scale effect will be the phase scale as defined by our computed properties. Well, we can also add an animation closure here where we'll use the phase this time. But if we're going to use the phase, why don't we go back to our enum now and create one more computed property that's called animation that is of type animation. And then we can switch on self. And for the cases beginning and end, I'll use a bouncy animation with a duration of 0 0.5. In the case where it's middle, we'll use an ease in out animation the duration of 1.0 so all we need to do now is to return to our animation block and specify that the animation is that phase animation computed property that's pretty nice a forever beating heart well, let's take a look at this second example now where i'm going to take a little bit of a different approach to our enum I'll create a second enum then called animation phase two. That'll be case iterable. And I'm going to have three cases here. It's going to be initial, move, and scale. Now I want to compute different computed properties that will reflect what I want to do at those stages. Now the first initial stage, I want to create a vertical offset, which is a double. So I'm going to switch on self. And then for the initial phase, I want to set the offset to zero. But for the other two phases that are going to carry on, move and scale, I want the offset to be negative 100. Then let me also create a scale property that is also a double. Again, I'm going to switch on self. But for the initial case, I want the scale to be 1.0. When it's moving, I want it to scale up to 3.0. And then when we're at the final scale stage, I want it to be 15.0. The opacity will be another double. And we'll switch on self once more. For the initial and move stages, I'll keep the opacity at 1. But when it scales, I want it to fade down to 0. And while we're at it, I'll create an animation property here too, of type animation, and switch on self. For the case where it's initial, I want a nice smooth animation. For the move case, I'll create an ease in out animation where the duration is 0 0.5. And for the scale phase, a bouncy animation with a duration of 1.0. So now we can go back to our image and create the phase animator based on this new enums all cases sequence. But before I do that, let me just set the offset of the image to 100 now so that when we apply the phase animator, that first state, it will move back up smoothly. Now then, let's apply the phase animator after we set the foreground color on the image. We'll get that content and phase. So now let's apply the three different modifiers based on that phase. The scale effect will be the phase.scale, Offset for Y will be the phase vertical offset. 
and the opacity will be the phase opacity. Much easier to read and easier to understand. And then we can apply the animation to the phase animation. So this is a pretty cool animation here. Now there's one more thing that I need to cover here, and that's not having the animation start right away. It turns out that this is actually really easy. It's so easy, in fact, that let me create one more of those fancy phase animations. So I'll create another enum called the phase state this time, but I'm going to make it of the type int that's also case iterable. And we're going to have four cases. First, second, third, and fourth. So I want to change the color based on the phase, and I'll use a computed property. So like before, we'll switch on self. In the case of first, we'll make it yellow. In the case of second, I'll make it orange. And then for the remaining cases, we can use default and set it to red. So it'll cycle between yellow, orange, and red. Well, I also want to set a rotation based on the raw value, because we've set this as an int. So the raw value for our first case is going to be 0, 1 for second, 2 for third, and 3 for fourth. And I want to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So I'm going to, first of all, multiply by negative 1 the raw value, so self.raw value, times 90. So cycling through. 90 degrees each time, but it needs to be a double. Well, we can also perform a scale based on that raw value. So we'll simply take that self.raw value, which is initially zero. So if we start by adding one, we'll get our initial scale at one, and it'll increment each time as it cycles through. Of course, again, it has to be a double. Well, that's good for our enum. But first, though, let me remove this fixed color as we'll be changing that. And to trigger a phase animation, we'll need a state property that we can use to toggle. So I'm going to create one called start and initialize it as false. Now, this could be an int. We just need some kind of a value that we can watch that's going to change. So let me create an on tap gesture then. And that's where I'm just going to toggle that start property. Then I can create a phase animator method that'll iterate through these cases. So I'll, let me add now a phase animator method that will iterate through those phase state all cases. But I want to add an additional argument called trigger that will respond to that changing state property. Again, we'll get the content and phase that will give us access to our content. Then we can apply our modifiers now, where the foreground style will be the phase color. The scale effect will be the phase scale. And the rotation effect will be degrees using that phase rotation. I also want to use the same animation for all phases, so I can use that animation block without needing to use phase at all, and just create a bouncy animation with a duration of one second for each of my phases. Now I have to tap on the star, as it will change color, scale, and rotate, and then back again. So it does require that tap to start the animation. So I hope that this is something that you can use in your own projects. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. That helps drive more traffic to my channel. Thanks for watching.